<laughs> so at the end of Celestial Advice, Twilight was like, I promise I'll always be there for you. And at the beginning of All Bottled Up, Twilight was like, Later, nerd! I'ma hang out with my real friends. Don't touch my table. We've been playing Monopoly all hiatus, and I am this close to bankrupting Rarity, so don't fuck this one up for me. It's amazing that after so long, they still have moral lessons they haven't covered. Like, communicating with someone you're upset with. Or just flat out communicating with someone instead of letting the problem boil over into some disaster. I think seeing Spike fail to step up when he sees something obviously unacceptable happening is getting harder and harder to let slide. You do what you need to do. Because although we know that he knows the voice of reason routine doesn't work on Twilight... It's not the same thing, Twilight! No, Spike, it's exactly the same! There's no reason for him to have written off Starlight so quickly. I think maybe you're missing an opportunity to really impress Twilight? Starlight internalized the wrong message after the events of every little thing she does. Don't cast spells on your friends! Doing something stupid and short-sighted and then owning up to it and apologizing for it is a two-way street. Starlight should stop thinking of herself as Trixie's friend and start thinking that they are friends with each other, lest the relationship get pretty one-sided. The director said, let's give you an apple to eat in this scene so you'll look like even more of an asshole. The onus should be on the offender. That and the fact that you forgive me every time. You have to make your friends better people too. And if you think your friends only like you because you enable their shitty behavior, you have shitty friends. I can constantly just surround myself with sick of and enablers until I die tragically young. I don't want to lose Trixie. Sort of like the lesson from Pony point of view, but not really. That was closer to friendships can survive anger, and this is more like anger is actually a healthy part of friendships. The starlight I love is passionate, lively, and yeah, sometimes angry. So, yeah. Well, this episode goes in another direction, too. Keeping your emotions bottled up is really bad, but expressing yourself all the damn time can be counterproductive as well. Like, sure, Griffin set the record, and they hardly even like each other, but don't you think that might have something to do with it? Rivalries can breed competition, so they would race to one-up each other. They also wouldn't waste time on meaningless platitudes and congratulations. Yay! We solved another clue! Sure, friendship may be magic, but you have to make sure to apply it correctly. Does any pony need a purple jewel? Ooh, Plumber Boysenberry! Like how Rarity still doesn't respect AJ's utilitarianism? Wasn't this time needlessly wasted due to Rarity's lack of understanding of her friend? You missed the Griffin record by two seconds. I mean, yes, lack of communication is bad, but these two aren't communicating very well even though they're friends. And the song isn't even representative of what's happening in the scene. Well, I don't have to say what I'm thinking. You already know without even blinking. The song is a better fit to Saddle Row review. Please, Pinkie Pie. Never Dash. Well, they all knew what Rarity wanted, but also understood her well enough to know that what she wanted might not be the best way. What would Rarity want? How does the song about being on the same wavelength as all your friends fit into the theme of communication being beneficial? I simply can't imagine there'd be a day where I wouldn't want to be walking your way. Or was it even supposed to? I, I don't know, whatever. This episode gets an A plus without even regarding the main six's storyline. And as always, here are some random musings. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not touching this one. I'm leaving it to more qualified analysts. Okay, hold on just a second. She was inside Twilight's castle. Where did she get the pretzels? And to stay on the tangent of the pretzels for a second, like this is pretty clearly a mistake. That's Starlight's magic pulling them out of her bag. And why did Starlight even bring them to the train station if she didn't intend to give them to Twilight? You just had to give Twilight those smelly pretzels! And why are they smelly pretzels? Do pretzels smell bad? Is this just something I'm unaware of? Do Canadians not know how to make pretzels? Every self-respecting magician has a disappearing act. That's technically a teleportation spell. You know, Starlight could have interpreted disappearing spell to mean invisibility spell if she really wanted to start Trixie off with something easier than teleportation. Just saying. Teach away, Mini Twilight! Ooh, I'm going to start with a facial, and then get my hooves done! You know, I'm just gonna leave that one alone, too. Why is this happening to Starlight? Don't get me wrong, I'm not naysaying it, it's really cool, but like, will it happen again? I mean, this isn't the angriest we've seen her. Is this like a regular thing unicorns deal with? Hey, is the Apple family growing beets now because of the tonic from Leaf of Faith? Is it just me, or could this spell be used for assassinations? Trixie was not trying to avoid that nut cart. 
She rushed directly towards it. Patreon support would be amazing, especially after the dip in ad revenue. And if that's not your style, you can check out my main channel or my gaming channel or just watch another video on this channel.